Welcome to Trash Imagination, a podcast about reimagining trash. I'm Carla Brown. In today's episode, we will talk about creative reuse of hubcaps. Now, I'm not that knowledgeable about cars. My son's first word was car, and we spent many hours watching cars drive by, but I don't really know one brand from the other. However, it is amazing to learn how artists creatively reuse hubcaps. Nowadays, many cars don't even have hubcaps, and it's just kind of like neckties or paper maps. Our world is populated with this huge collection of something that hardly anyone needs anymore. And so it becomes an opportunity for us to make art. Hubcaps were invented in 1680. For centuries, they were made from metal even when the wheel was made from wood. But after 1970, most hubcaps started to be made from plastic. People collect hubcaps because they are restoring antique vehicles or just because they love the designs. And some hubcaps feature art deco designs. And did you know that hubcaps even decorate the Chrysler Building in New York City? Now, what inspired this episode was an email from Sharon Zagrosi from Blooming Hubcaps. Sharon found Trash Imagination, and she wanted to let me know that she enjoys listening to the podcast, which was a lovely email to receive. She also wondered, had I considered doing an episode on hubcaps? So let's learn about Sharon. Sharon's interest in painting hubcaps started about 11 years ago, and it was related to her love of gardening. She is a master naturalist and a manager at a landscape company. She noticed that some gardeners were decorating their gardens with flowers made from recycled hubcaps. So one day, she found a hubcap, and it reminded her of the sunflowers in her garden. She decided to paint it. And that was a lot of fun, so she kept going, and soon her friends started asking for her hubcap decorations. At first, she would buy hubcaps at a wrecking yard for about $5 each, but word got around that she wanted hubcaps, and people started giving them to her. And soon, she had so many that she had to ask people to stop. Most of Sharon's hubcaps are plastic, which makes them lightweight to display. She likes to add details, especially to the centers of the hubcaps, such as metal bottle caps, buttons, and aluminum cans that she cuts into petal shapes. She also makes attachments from Nespresso cups, which I talked about in my episode about creative reuse of coffee packaging. She reuses the foil covers from the tops of wine bottles. It took experimentation to figure out which adhesive worked best, And now she keeps seeing the possibilities of new items that she could attach to her hubcap art. She used to cover up the car brand insignia at the center of the hubcap, but she has found that some people are sentimental about car brands, so she is experimenting with leaving it visible. For example, one of her customers used to work in a car factory. People are also sentimental about hubcaps, sometimes because they came from an old, beloved car. Some people ask her to paint their hubcaps as a commission. One person saved a hubcap after a car accident. As Sharon said, when she finds a hubcap on the side of the road, it's usually broken in some way. She thinks of it as being an orphan from the rest of its hubcap family, So she likes to help transform that tragic life into a piece of art. People display her hubcaps indoors and outdoors. She tells people to bring them inside if there is a forecast of a big windstorm because the hubcaps are so lightweight. Many people display the hubcaps on a building or maybe hanging from a shepherd's hook. And they also attach them to chain link fences or trellises. I asked Sharon if there are any types of hubcaps that make her most excited when someone donates them to her. She told me about a hubcap called a spinner, which is a hubcap with an extra piece attached which spins as the car drives. She has only received a few of those spinner hubcaps, but she likes how the wind will move whatever she attaches to the spinner. 
Sharon has a friend who is an oncology nurse, and she asked Sharon to facilitate a workshop at the Cancer Center for women who were doing breast cancer treatments. They called the event Drive Away Cancer. Sharon prepared the hubcaps by cleaning them and painting primer on them. She brought paints and lots of fun things to attach to the hubcaps. She told the students that the nice thing about painting on a hubcap is that the canvas is already defined in many ways. You can look at the hubcap and you can see what it makes you want to paint based on its shape. She asked them to think about what element of the hubcap would be most prominent and how they might add items to the center of the hubcap. Later, one of the participants told her that this workshop was one of the highlights of her cancer journey. Sharon would like to offer hubcap painting workshops online. Most students want to buy her hubcaps already prepared, which makes sense because most people don't have hubcaps easily accessible. If you are interested in learning how to paint hubcaps, be sure to reach out to Sharon at Blooming Hubcaps, or you can also buy one of her own artworks on Etsy. Sharon is not the only painter who has discovered the joys of a hubcap as a canvas. Here are a few other painters who each paint hubcaps in their own styles. Harriet Winograd recently started a series of hubcap portraits of famous women, such as Kamala Harris, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, and Greta Thunberg. Sam Wayman paints pet and animal portraits on many materials, including hubcaps, but also ceiling fan blades. Donna Gentili talks about the sacred geometry and facilitates artwork therapy workshops based on mandalas. Of course, the hubcap is just the perfect canvas for her. Ellen Hunter paints cosmic and spiritual images on hubcaps. Mariah Reading picks up trash at national parks and paints them so that they blend seamlessly into the landscape. And one of her pieces was on a hubcap. And then there is a painted hubcap project called the Landfill Art Project. In 2009, an art gallery owner named Ken Marquis came up with the idea of asking artists around the world to paint on hubcaps. He bought a few collections of hubcaps, and then he supplied them to the artists. In the end, there were 1,041 hubcaps painted, and Ken made a book of all of the art that was made, and there was also a touring show of 200 hubcaps. So clearly hubcaps can be a great canvas for painting, and if you tell your friends that you want hubcaps, it seems like you might be able to get those canvases for free. I did find a few examples where art teachers did a project with hubcaps with their students. And if you know an art teacher who does a hubcap art project, please let me know at trashimagination at gmail.com. Our next artist sculpts hubcaps, and he puts them together to make the most unbelievable animal sculptures. Ptolemy Elrington's website and social media is called the Hubcap Creatures, and they are so lifelike. I really hope you will go check them out. It looks like the hubcaps fit together in a perfect puzzle. But meanwhile, it's all based on Ptolemy's vision. He says that he gets inspired to make specific animals by the designs of the hubcaps. He makes a lot of fish, but also many other animals like birds, cats, horses, and more. To make his sculptures, Ptolemy looks at the hubcap to see what the shapes inspire him to make. He then manipulates the hubcaps in many ways. Some are more flexible and can be bent. He will cut and drill the hubcaps to make those perfect puzzle pieces. He attaches the pieces together with galvanized wire that he salvages from demolition sites. He makes little staple shapes from the wire to connect the pieces. In addition to working with plastic hubcaps, Ptolemy also does some metal sculptures with welding. For example, he made a dinosaur from bicycle frames. Ptolemy started sculpting with hubcaps in 2001. He got the idea to use hubcaps because he used to live near a bend in the road that also had a bump in the road. The hubcaps tended to fall off and collect there. Ptolemy had studied art in college, and he remembered making a sculpture from recycled materials for a class there. He said that was the most exciting thing he made at college. 
He has also traveled around the world, and he saw how in many places creative reuse was a much more common practice than in Western countries. Now today, his sculptures sell for thousands of euros. You might remember that last year, I found a Turkish television show about recycled art. Ptolemy was featured on that show, and that's when I first learned about his work. I really recommend you check out this episode if you want to see how he manipulates the hubcaps. You can see him working in his studio, and it's really fun to see him hard at work. He talks about how his studio is his haven, and I agree, it feels very comforting to be in there, even though it clearly is not heated. The last creative reuse example that I will share today is about how talented builders make guitars and banjos from hubcaps. Here's how Steve Einhorn's slide guitar sounds. This one is made from hubcaps. I also found a tutorial by Thomas Peterson from Refuse Reuse showing how he made his hubcap guitar in January 2020. Thomas makes guitars from so many random materials, and he also builds things with Star Wars and steampunk themes. So check out his Instagram if that sounds fun for you. Thank you for listening. I made a Pinterest board about the creative reuse of hubcaps, Please let me know if you have ever creatively reused hubcaps at trashmagination at gmail.com. Until next time, may you see hubcaps as a source of art in your life. <laughs>